It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Robert Geislinger. It's 2456 and the Earth has been abandoned. Let's roll some dice and ride our way to colonize three planets. It also helps that I really enjoy filling out Scantron sheets. Today, we're taking a look at Cosmic Run Rapid Fire. So here we're taking a look at Cosmic Run Rapid Fire. This is a game for one to two players where players are going to be trying to advance their ships to each of these three planets. In addition to this, we're also going to be upgrading some techs, which we'll cover here in a minute. And we're going to be dealing with some mines that some alien races are laying out for us. Now, this is a roll and write game. So each player is going to have their own particular sheet, which they're all the same. There is a, an advanced side on the other side, a B. But typically, both players are going to be playing with the same side. So in this game, the first thing that's going to happen is the first player, who is the captain for that round, is going to roll a number of mine dice. Now, depending on which round you're in is going to determine how many dice you roll or rather how many times you roll it. So in the first round, we're just gonna be rolling it once. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to mark off that we are doing that, and we're gonna roll these two dice. These are gonna have a letter and a number, which is gonna to equate to something on each of these tracks, and each player is going to mark off. So here we have a B4, so we'll take a B and a four, and we'll fill that in for a mine. We'll take a B4 here, which is here, and we'll do a B4 here, which is here. So now those are impassable unless we have a technology to get through them. After this, the captain is going to roll all of these white dice. And then we're going to do a draft for them. The first player will select one of these dice and apply its effect. The different type of dice we can take are we're going to have dice with pips between one and three equating to an orange, blue, or green. So if we for say took this red one with the three pips, then we would be able to advance our orange ship here. One, two, and then three. Now the thing about movement is you can only go up or sideways. You can't go diagonal unless you have a technology that allows it, which we'll cover here in a minute. So we took that dice and applied it. Then our opponent could take a die. Well, another die that is out here is this one here, which has a pip, but also has an attack thing on it. Now, what this means is our opponent would get to advance their blue ship by one space and then put an attack on our ship here, unless we can counter it. If we can't counter it, then we are going to lose one of the healths for our blue ship. Other dice that we can take will be this one here, which equates to this technology here, and that is a missile. If we take that die, we would immediately mark off the next one in line, stating that we now have a missile at our disposal. Now, missiles are a defensive type missile and that they will defend against a mine and attacks. So after that earlier mine roll, if it had hit one of our ships in its current position, we could negate it by using a missile or here, when our opponent had attacked us, we could have used the missile to negate that attack. When you use it, you will then mark it out as such. The next one we have is this one here, which is a navigational control. If I can find that on a die, which here we go this one right here. And that just gives us a technology that we can use the same way to move diagonally during our movement during a later taking of a die. The next one we have here is this multi circled one, which is a transformer. And that is just a technology that allows us to change the color of a die we take later. So if when we took this orange one here, we had decided we actually want it to be green and we had this available, we would have been able to use it and then apply this to that other color. 
The last one we have is a warp drive. And I think I saw that one right here. And that simply is a tech that allows us to, if we're moving through, we can move through a mine, but we do need to be able to move through it. So if our ship was say right here and we took this one, we wouldn't be able to do it because we'd still end in the mine if we had the tech. But if we'd taken the three and we were here, we can move through one, two, three if we have the tech to do so. Now, one other thing to keep in mind about movement is you can never be more than five spaces above your lowest ship. So you do need to kind of move in an even sort of pattern. Earlier, when we rolled the mine die, if that had hit on the exact space that our ship is, our ship would take a damage and then move back one space. There is one other type of die that I didn't mention, and if I can find it, it doesn't come up as often as this. This is a mine die that actually allows the player who drafts it to re-roll these mine die and apply that only to their opponent. Another thing you can do with dice is you can place them here in your cargo hold. So if we took this, say, one pip and we don't want to use it, we could place it here. And then if we take this, say, transformer and we don't want to use it, we could put it here, which then allows us to upgrade one of our techs for free in exchange for those two dice. So we could take those in and maybe we take on maybe another missile. In addition, we have this here, which allows you to have four rerolls for the entirety of the game. And so let's say we took this right here and we don't like it. We could mark off one of our rerolls and we could reroll that die. Now, if we don't like it, we could even take another. You could do it all in one swoop if you wish, but you only... <laughs> Bad luck. You can only do four of those for the entirety of the game. Now the game itself can end in one of three ways. The first way is if a player manages to get all three of their ships to the planets, then they immediately win and no scoring happens. Another way is if a player has no possible movement on all three of these tracks, whether that be because they're completely blocked or because they have all been disabled. And in that case, we're actually going to do a final scoring instead, and we'll cover that in just a second. The third way is if we hit the 12th round and hit that end and no player has reached a condition for ending, in which case we will still end the game and also do a scoring. For end game scoring, we are first going to look at our tech trees and we'll see how far up we've gotten each of those. We'll add those points up and add them in here. Then we will check each of our ship tracks. And for each ship that is not disabled, we'll see how high up it got and we'll put in its points. If a ship for some reason has not crossed the negative five here, it will actually lose points. Also, if you'll lose seven points for any ship that has been disabled. And one thing to keep in mind is that can be combined. So if a ship was disabled before it crossed the negative five threshold, you would lose 12 points for that ship. Add those points up. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, in the event of a tie, it will be the player who has the higher technology score. So let's look at Cosmic Run Rapid Fire. Now, two points I want to make before I dive into my review is the first that this game is in the same world with Cosmic Run, same designer, but this game is a standalone game in its own right. It plays differently, but it does share a name and same universe as the original Cosmic Run. The other thing is a small rules thing I just wanted to clarify, and that is the mind die. If you draft it, you first get to set the letter to whatever you wish it to be, and then you get to roll the number die and apply that towards your opponent. With that said, I really like this game. The first thing that I always look for in a two-player game is how quickly does it set up? And this game sets up quickly. I open the box, I hand the other person a pad, and we start playing. And that I really, really like. I also like how this game could be different depending on who I play it with. And what I mean by that is that you could play this game very aggressively. You could really be mean in this game and just attack your opponent relentlessly every time you get those dice. But you also could just pull back and decide that you just want to advance your tech and you want to move and get to the planets as fast as possible. So the game can really change depending on your opponent. It also can change if you play the B side versus the A side and that gives the game a lot of replayability. I do worry the game could get a little stale if I played it with the same person over and over again and they pretty much played the same way each time but that's not really a concern for me but it might be for you. 
I enjoy how the tension in the game really starts to ratchet up as you're rolling those mind die more frequently as the game progresses, but also that gives these times where you'll hit things that you've already done and so nothing happens. So the game really balances well in that. And one thing I really liked in this game is the fact that when I roll those mind die and it hits one of my ships, I got a nostalgic feeling of battleship. Like before you sunk my battleship and Again, the game's not Battleship, but I enjoy anything that gives me a nostalgic feeling in a new game. The one thing that I didn't like about the game was the solo game. The solo game to me felt a little weird. It felt a little punishing and super hard. And there's a novice version, but that didn't really change my opinion of it. I honestly don't think I would recommend this game solo. And that was sad because I really hoped that it would be. One thing I love in solo games is games I can pull out of the box and just play. So I'm not going to recommend this game on the solo game. You might enjoy it. For me, it was a miss. There's also a variant in the back of the game that allows for a friendlier two-player version, and for me, that was not my preferred play. But if you're playing with someone who really doesn't like a lot of take that and a lot of direct conflict, it's definitely worth taking a look at that rule set. Overall, if you're looking for a light game, easy setup, easy to learn, and, and easy to play, this is definitely a game you want to take a look at. If you're looking at this game solely for the solitaire, I might caution you away from it. Again, it just wasn't my cup of tea. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Cosmic Run Rapid Fire and it's helped you decide whether or not this might be the roll and write game for you. And I look forward to seeing you folks next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.